Last year, we got the SNES Classic Edition console. The year before that, we got the NES Classic Edition console. Some are speculating that this year, we'll get the N64 Classic, while others are saying we'll get the Game Boy Classic. I'm of the latter camp. It just seems like an easier job to get a collection of Game Boy games together than it is to get a collection of N64 games together. Hell, we haven't seen a good port of GoldenEye since... ever. So here's what I think the Game Boy Classic Edition will be like, and the games that I think need to be on there. Before researching for this video, I thought that there weren't enough classic Game Boy games. I just assumed it'd be better to mash Game Boy Color and Game Boy games together into one classic console. It's probably hard to find a manufacturer these days who can produce green colorless LCD screens anyway, so you might as well just make it full color. What is it, the TI-86? They still make those, right? It's probably the only thing they make those screens for. So your school can charge you $100 for a calculator. And besides, there definitely aren't many classic Game Boy Color games. Besides, of course, Metal Gear Solid, which is one of the best rated Game Boy Color games on game rankings and one of the best rated games of all time. And I agree, it's one of the best Metal Gear games. It's insane how good it is, despite how unpopular it is. I was hoping to include Game Boy Color games just so I can talk about Metal Gear Solid, but unfortunately there are just way too many good classic original Game Boy games. But I talk about whatever the heck I want, so I did it anyway. This supposed Game Boy Classic needs to be smaller than the original Game Boy, because this thing is huge. The Game Boy Pocket, or hell, even the Game Boy Color would be better form factors, but honestly, I think we can opt for something even smaller. The other Classic Edition consoles are identical in form factor, but scaled down versions of their originals. I think it would behoove Nintendo to cut the height down a little bit in the Game Boy Classic, make it a little more square. I don't think anybody would complain. At the very least, it needs to be thinner, for sure. It would be really great if it had a cartridge slot for physical games, but that seems very unlikely. And for the love of God, please put a backlight on this thing. It'd be a real neat feature to have a color screen that allows for the option to use Game Boy Color styled visuals. Some Game Boy games like Pokemon had color data added to them on the Game Boy Color. Why not give us that option on the classic? One of, if not the most important game to include on the Game Boy Classic Edition would be Metroid 2 The Return of Samus. I'm just kidding, it'd be Pokemon, but fans would really like Metroid 2. This was a direct sequel to the NES game. It didn't see a port to any other console until it was remade in 2016, but that was an unofficial remake done by fans, and Nintendo quickly smacked that down. It was officially remade for the 3DS last September. This game is a cult classic among Metroid fans, potentially for how hard it was to come by. Now that Metroid Samus Returns is out for the 3DS, the mystique is kind of ruined. But it was praised for a long time as one of the best Metroid games, which is a high honor considering it's a frickin' Game Boy game. Yeah, of course we gotta talk about Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. These would be the most sought after games, and probably the reason why most people would buy a Game Boy Classic Edition. Having all three would fill up the Game Boy Classic library real quick. This would be a great move on Nintendo's part, especially if the new Pokemon truly is a yellow remake. Then, super nostalgic fans would have more crap to buy. I knew people who walked around with the Game Boy just to play Pokemon a whole 15 years after the game came out. Imagine if we had a super tiny, a micro version with these games built in. Man, children everywhere would be thrilled. Another popular one would be The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. This was originally intended to be a Game Boy port of A Link to the Past, but spun off into its own game with its own unique story. The portable Zelda games are no joke. This game led the way for some solid Game Boy Color installments, including an upgraded version of Link's Awakening. But you know what was more popular? Tetris. To this day, Tetris is still the number one best-selling game of all time. It was bundled with every Game Boy system, so of course it was. Its many different iterations could have also contributed to this. Tetris is also, I think, Will's pick for best game of all time? I know it's up there. His justification is that it is the most definitive game. 
You perform a simple task with a clear goal in mind over and over again, and the end result is fun. It's a puzzle game, man. I don't know what you want from me. You can't go wrong with Kirby's Dream Land. This was the first Kirby game ever. That's right, Kirby was white before he was pink. It's even got this part in it. Haha, <laughs> Smash Brothers. You remember that? You remember that from Smash Brothers? Despite its warm reception, its popularity, and the fact that it started a franchise, it only has a 62.22% on game rankings. Interesting. Of course, we can't leave out the Mario games. The Game Boy had some classics on it for sure, but they weren't exactly the best Mario games, so they're easily forgettable. Super Mario Land looks like a bizarro version of the original Super Mario Brothers. It even has side-scrolling shooter levels. Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins, was much more popular. This had its own art style, somewhere between Mario 3 and Mario World. This is also the first appearance of Wario, who takes the place of Bowser as the main antagonist. This would be the best Mario game on the console. Since Mario Land 2 did so well, and people seem to like Wario so much, they released Wario Land Super Mario Land 3 where Wario is the protagonist. This game has the highest game ranking score of them all at 83.11%. But it's not really a Mario game, it's a Wario game. Wah! Of course, there's also Dr. Mario, which came out the same day as the NES version in Japan on July 27th, 1990. It's very similar to Tetris. Well, it's more similar to Puyo Puyo, but that came later, so. Poyo Poyo is similar to Dr. Mario. It's just a tile matching puzzle game. You get the idea. It's only on this list because it's a classic. Everybody knows Dr. Mario, if not just for his appearance in Smash that nobody asked for. There's no reason for him to be his own character. Just make him his skin for Mario. Change the fireballs to pills. Boom, done. Let's see here, we already did 11 games. The NES Classic had 30 games and the SNES Classic had 21 games, so Let's plow through three more and try to just riddle off the rest. Final Fantasy Adventure, or maybe you know it as Seiken Densetsu Final Fantasy Gaiden, or maybe Holy Sword Legend Final Fantasy Side Story, or Mystic Quest, maybe just Mystic Quest. This game is very confusing because even though it's called Final Fantasy Adventure, it plays like a Zelda game and it's actually the precursor to Secret of Mana and the rest of the Mana series. So this is an important game to include. There's also Castlevania The Adventure, which deserves a spot on the Game Boy Classic for posterity's sake, but it's not a, not a good game. It lacks a lot of what makes a Castlevania game special. On the other hand, Castlevania II Belmont's Revenge definitely deserves to be there. This one includes some series staples like sub-weapons, which you'd think would be a no-brainer to include. That's right, I played Bloodstained once, now I'm a Castlevania pro, I know everything about it. It has an 83.50% on game rankings, which comparatively is way better than the 52.88% that its predecessor has. So that's 14 of the most important ones. To finish it out, we'll toss in Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Land 2, Bionic Commando, Kid Icarus of Myths and Monsters, Mario's P-Cross, which you might know from the outfit in Super Mario Odyssey, Mega Man, Dr. Wily's Revenge, Operation C, which is just Contra, and the Game Boy version of Harvest Moon. And why not the Game Boy Camera? These little cameras can't be that expensive to toss into a device these days, and it would be really fun to screw around with. It takes the dumbest pictures. This one barely works that I have, but you can make some really cool stuff with it with one that does work. And you don't need this big bulbous thing. Just take the little tiny camera like a cell phone camera and just plop it into the back of it. So that's 22 games, or 23 if you include the Game Boy camera. Most of these games are Nintendo first party titles, which is why I think it would be a lot easier to collect Game Boy Classic games than it would be for an N64 Classic, save for some hardware things they'd have to try to figure out. There's probably room for some more games though. So what do you guys think should be included on the Game Boy Classic Edition console if they're even making one? 
25 games sounds like a nice round number, so let's try to get two or three more games on there. And don't just pull one out of your memory, because I remember I used to play Gremlins 2 all of the time, and it wasn't until recently that I learned that that game is complete and utter trash. There's a level in it that is literally impossible to beat. Four-year-old me was just playing it over and over again, just developing a complex, no problem. The only option now is to kill him with your pencil, but you can't. He'll kill you with his fireball before you can even get near him. Anyway, leave it in the comments below. Add me on Twitter, all of this other social media garbage. We got new videos and live streams all of the time here on YouTube and over on twitch.tv slash wolfden. Check out the schedule in our pinned tweet in case it changes by the time you see this video or go to our main channel page. It'll be on the top banner. And as always, Wolf Den Live, our live podcast every single Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, where we will talk to you guys about all the happenings in video games. If you'd like to support the channel, you could do so by sponsoring us on YouTube Gaming or supporting us through Twitch Prime completely free. There's a link to sponsoring us on YouTube Gaming down below, Twitch Prime. You just go to our Twitch and you click the little sponsor and you'll, you'll figure it out. That gives you access to the sponsor only Discord and all these other perks. Of course, the most important things that you can do, though, is just subscribe and or share this video with a friend, a friend who's into collecting all of these different classic edition consoles, because he's probably very interested in the Game Boy Classic. Thank you guys very much. You have yourselves a very good week.